hello guys welcome to my channel so today i'm going to start a new series and it totally depends on the response that i will be getting through this video and if you really like this one then only i'm going to continue with this series otherwise this is going to be the only one uh, in this series so as you have already read the title this video is going to be about multi-threading interview questions which are very popular uh, it doesn't depend on the experience that you are having if you are a java developer then this is going to be asked in every interview so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do and please let me know if you have any other suggestion for me in the comment box and without wasting any time let's just start with it so the very first question which is going to be asked is what is a thread so first of all you need to know that it is a class in java so that's the package and thread is a class so that's the very first thing that you have to know so when we have uh, established that part now we need to know is what it is the like why is it in the java and what it, what it is doing actually so java is is uh, using thread to execute task in parallel so what do i mean by that so when we execute task in parallel which means that if, if you see here google chrome and uh, file explorer and this tool they are all opened in an operating system and they are being running simultaneously so they are in a parallel execution so that's why i'm able to navigate to anyone uh, as much as possible so that is what we we mean by parallel execution so thread is providing us that task so whatever task we want to execute we can execute it parallelly and it gives us leverage to uh, minimize the execution time because they all will be executing in parallel so let's see a mathematical computation so let's say if we have task 1 which is going to take 1 minute and we have task 2 which is uh, going to take two minutes so the total amounts to three minutes so when we run this in parallel so total execution will be maybe two minutes and it reduced the time by one minute and it totally depends on the operating system so if you have a good operating system and good hardware on your laptop or system then it is going to be more efficient than two minute otherwise uh, it, it can be two minutes so we have reduced the time by one minute so this is just an example but it could be uh, one million minutes or two million minutes so in that case we are reducing the time by one million minutes so it it gives us a minimum execution time so that's why we always try to execute our tasks in parallel so that's why threads are being used in big applications and big projects and that is why it is a most favorite topic of an interviewer to be asked uh, so how can we create threads so, so there are few ways like uh, basically we use two ways only by either extending thread class which we have already uh, seen in the package and there is one interface which we have to implement runnable but now we have few more so other than callable we can also use executor framework so these are many ways and they provide different functionality and that totally depends on the requirement or the developer so they can decide whatever they want but these are the popular ways which we actually use to create a thread so now let's see the thread life cycle so thread life, life cycle have few points which uh, means states so first state is new then it's runnable and then it's either blocked or waiting or timed waiting and then it's terminated 
so you don't have to define terminator because that doesn't mean anything so these are the only ones that we have to actually tell to the interviewer so he will ask us to explain so i can explain explain you like this so new uh, so a thread will be in new state only when the thread is a newly created thread and it is not yet started the thread will be in runnable state when the thread has been started but actually it is waiting for the cpu to be assigned okay so now block waiting and time waiting so these states con can only be uh, can only happen when the when the thread is either waiting for an object or a lock to be released or maybe it is actually waiting for another thread to complete an execution right so it could be in an order and it wants the uh, the uh, previous thread to be completed before it can actually start so things like that can put and put a thread in these states so waiting and time waiting is uh, is simple as you can see by the name so it will wait in indefinitely it will wait for a specific time time duration and block means that it is actually waiting for uh, and a resource or an object to be released so that's the life cycle of thread now let's see uh, how many types of threads are there so there are actually two types only one is daemon thread and another one is non daemon thread so daemon and non daemon thread so what do we mean by daemon thread so daemon thread basically are only the background processes which happen just to help us in our own application or let's say a process so daemon thread is basically um, it it can be provided by java or it can be provided by us so it can be a user thread or it can be a background process so we can create daemon thread on our own and this question is going to be asked if we can create a daemon thread on our own okay so i will explain you how can we do that but let's say what are non daemon thread so non daemon thread are the threads which we create using these three or using callable so these are by default every thread is by default non daemon so to make a thread non daemon uh, daemon we first have to create a thread then there is a method which is that which which you can use to create the thread as daemon so there is a method called set daemon and you just have to provide it a value boolean value as true so when you do that it will make the current thread as daemon now it will uh, suffice the interviewer question so that is what we have okay so there are uh, like i said there are background processes which java provides us like we don't have to create so you can give examples so the very first thread is public static void main so you already know this because there is no application which will be running without this so we use this syntax more often that than we think so this is the very first daemon thread that is being used by our jvm to execute the application because this is the entry point right and this is what jvm requires us to provide and in the very same syntax so this is going to be the first thread created by our application and this is a daemon thread okay so i think that that's part that part is done so now there are few things that we can do on a thread so first is priority so as you already know they they can be multiple threads running in an operating system so if you want to provide an order for that thread to run so you have to provide them the priority so that our cpu can pick the highest priority uh, uh, thread uh, before then the lower priority one but that doesn't happen because 
CPU has its own CPU scheduler and through that it actually picks up the process or thread so that's create problem for us because we can't actually do that and it varies from operating system to operating system so as I'm using Windows so it is going to work differently as uh, Mac OS or Linux or Ubuntu so but you can always pri uh, provide them the priority because uh, it can uh, run in that order or it cannot so it totally depends on the CPU scheduling techniques okay so I don't think this is going to be asked but there is one thing that is going to be asked is that how can we debug a thread so the question should be like this how will you debug threads because there are going to be a lot of threads that are running in your application so there are two ways so first is that if uh, if you have a name for that thread then you can search that thread through name and then you can easily debug the entire process the other way is priority which I have already discussed so you can set a name for that thread and then you can actually debug and then see the process and the flow and if anything went wrong then you can obviously debug it so that's one way now thread uh, has few methods like thread class has few methods we have sleep method we have yield method and lot more like join we have so this question is going to get asked that why we have wait notify and notify all in object class not in thread class so I'll, I'll easily differentiate but the first question could be how many methods of, of what, what methods do we have in thread class or in object class so sleep yield join first you have to know what they do so these methods actually work on the entire thread because this method is going to put that thread on a waiting state this one will notify the other threads and this is actually just to make a make an order among threads but these methods don't actually work on thread they work on the object where we are actually locking so when we say wait that means that the current thread is waiting for a resource or an object to be released notify means that I want other threads to notify that I have done my part now you can take over notify all will actually notify all the threads that are waiting for the object or the resource to work on so that's why they all are in object class and these are in thread class so you have to know them okay now as I said thread scheduling is done by the thread scheduler which is actually platform dependent and it stays inside JVM so as you know for every operating system we have a different JVM right so there is no known way to control thread scheduler from Java and many of thread related decision is done by scheduler okay which could be like if there are many threads waiting and which thread to be notified by the CPU okay so as, as I said there are many methods in thread class so few more methods are like is active holds lock so these two are the method to check if the thread is dead or active this one is just to check if it is actually holding any lock or not so these uh, I don't know if, uh, if this question is going to be asked but if you are remembering these three methods it's good to know these ones too because uh, no like uh, if you know more it's not going to hurt right so now the most important thing is each stack has uh, each thread has, has its own memory like public stack 
static void main is having its own memory which is stack memory so that is how it actually provides the memory to all the local variables or the or the or the uh, or the method variables um, the memory that they need okay so you have to know because it's always customizable like we provide heap memory a specific size which you wouldn't know but if you see your application we actually do that so we can always give more to heap and less to stack because that is always conventional now as i've already told you that callable interface has been introduced in java 5 and what actually it is doing is so if you know x uh, thread and runnable if you have worked on it you know that they don't actually return anything but callable interface actually returns a future object which uh, you can use to um, get more information because there is a method called get and using that method you can get the result of the task execution okay now let's come to the main part thread synchronization so what what do we mean by synchronization actually we mean mutual exclusion so it can be provided by two ways so first way is obviously synchronization okay the second way is lock if you know uh, concurrency you know that there is a there is a implementation called locking technique which we use to provide more robust functionality Previously, we used to do synchronized keyword only. Now we have lock also. So let's give more, like let's get more detail. More, let deep dive into it. Okay, so synchronized keyword is there, which basically you can use to, let's say if I have an array list, so I can use the synchronized keyword to provide, provide a lock to that list but i can also use synchronized block for a particular object right so here you have to provide this or the class name let's say test dot class things like that so there are multiple ways to use synchronization and you can do that but it is always tricky because you will always you you won't always know what is going to happen because we have to cover all the scenarios so that's why we have lock and lock is basically in concurrent package which is java dot util dot concurrent dot lock okay so now why do we use lock so it's for the same reason that we have to hold an object uh, because we are doing or a thread is doing some work and it doesn't want the other thread to continue the execution because it is going to avoid uh, asset properties right so any thread that needs to hold monitor or lock required by that criti critical critical section in order to enter into synchronized block or method they release that lock once they exit either normally or abruptly due to any error accusation and release of monitor is done by java itself so it's safe and easy for java programmer right but if you use lock interface you need to explicit explicitly acquire lock and release it because java is not going to do that for you and this actually requires more caution okay but the the good point is that lock interface is more powerful and it actually provides fine grained control and which are only available from java 5 so these are the two ways to provide mutual exclusion now as you all already know how to create a thread with callable with uh, 
executor with renewable and with thread we have different different methods so you need to know all about them but overall this is what we have and i don't think um, we will be needing to know more about what is a thread we are going to go more deep into it and we will be asking few more questions which are going to get uh, more complex as we go on like uh, what is the difference between renewable and thread when should be when should we use thread when should we use renewable okay things like that uh, we are going to uh, get into the next videos so i think that is about this one so again if you like this content please let me know i will continue with this series otherwise this is the only one and uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel please do that share it if you really love it and if you can help your friends with it and comment on the video if you if you didn't get any section or any topic here i will explain more and again have a good day have a nice day thank you bye bye